let's take a look at Internet Explorer 8. Again, this is a development version that I'm looking at, Beta 1, uh, which Microsoft has released to the public, but it should be noted that you should not be running this on a production system. The reason Microsoft has released this to the public is to give companies like my own uh, and web developers and people like that uh, a chance to try their websites with Internet Explorer 8 to make sure that their websites are compatible so that when Microsoft does finally release the software, um, we don't get any surprises. So this Interesting to note, though, that um, well, with the interoperability uh, commitments that Microsoft has announced back in February, uh, we may start to see some of their new features and innovative features they are uh, start to merge into programs like Firefox. And it's finally good to see, that said, uh, it's finally good to see that Microsoft is finally sort of stepping up to the plate and implementing some new features that actually look like pretty cool features that people like uh, Firefox, programs like Firefox may want to replicate in their software. A good example of that is their web slices feature, which we're going to be taking a look at in just a minute. Uh, but that's really, you know, other than that, there's not a whole lot that's that's terribly innovative, but there are a few things that are kind of cool about Internet Explorer 8. So when you first install it, here I am on Windows XP. We've just got our basic, uh, it looks very much like IE7. We do, uh, we still have the tab browsing, just like, uh, just like any other browser, so that's cool. Uh, but the few things that do really stand out, of course, like I say, is the web slices. And what the web slices do is basically, it's kind of similar to an RSS feed, and it's kind of better just to show you uh, rather than try to uh, explain it. And I'll do that just by bringing up a special page on eBay, which is designed, again, you know, developers are starting to work with this technology. So I'm just going to do an eBay search for computer, and we're just going to see what my results are here. Whatever. So you can see once I've highlighted this, I've just basically pointed to it. If I point to something, you're going to see this little icon out here, uh, and that's for the web slices. What that's going to do for us, let's say I'm interested in this product, okay? There's currently zero bids. Um, there's three minutes left on the sale. So I'm just going to point to that and then click on the web slice button, and that's going to allow me to subscribe to this web slice, and that's for this specific item on eBay. So now, up here in my favorites bar, you'll see that this sale on USB PS2 desktop computer is now up in my favorites bar. And I can organize this, and I can clean out these ones here that are here by stock, and then I'll just see that. Now, right now, it's bold because there's something new there. As soon as I click it, I can see sort of what's going on with the, uh, with the bid right now. And then I can also, you know, let's say somebody's outbid me, then I can place my bid. And that's all done right from the favorites bar, and this is called a web slice. Now you'll see now that I've viewed that, this is no longer bold because there's no longer any new uh, new information there. So that's kind of a cool feature. I mean, and that's something that I do, uh, you know, if, if uh, web developers are going to start developing using web slices, and that's, you know, only time can tell if people actually uh, catch on to it. Um, but it seems like something that if Microsoft includes that in their interoperability, if they share the source of that uh, in such a way that other companies are allowed to use it, we're definitely going to start seeing programs like Firefox implementing web slices into their browsers as well. And then that will give us a chance to, uh, to you know, use that on Linux because there is no Internet Explorer for Linux um, as well, you know, be able to have, uh, you know, fair competition between Microsoft Internet Explorer and uh, open source alternatives directly within Windows and other operating systems. So that looks like a promising feature. Um, another thing, and we were talking about how Microsoft tends to grab features from other software developers, and uh, you know, Firefox being uh, probably the best example. Um, finally, Internet, Ex Internet Explorer, and I'm a little tongue-tied tonight, forgive me. Uh, Internet Explorer is finally um, supporting crash recovery. So this is a definitely a good thing. If you've been using Firefox for some time, um, you'll know that if you're in the middle of working on a website or anything like that, uh, and, and Firefox crashes, or let's say your computer, you know, power goes out and it restarts, the first time that you bring up Firefox at that point, you know, once you've rebooted your computer or once you've just brought it up, it's going to ask you, you know, okay, well, you, you lost your session, do you want to restore it? And you click restore, and all the websites that you had open at the time are right back up on your screen. So it's good to see that Internet Explorer 8 now, now what I've done is I've forced a crash here, I'm going to click on Internet Explorer, and you can see this window very, very similar to Mozilla Firefox. Your last browsing session closed unexpectedly. Would you like to restore your last session or go to your home page? So I'm going to choose Restore My Last Session, and you'll see that that's going to take me right back to that USB PS2 computer sale that I was just sitting at uh, at eBay. 
So that's definitely a good feature. Nice to see that they finally implemented that, but again, it's something that they've ripped off of Firefox. Um, so, you know, nothing innovative there, but it's about time. That should have been implemented into Internet Explorer long before now. So just looking at some of the, uh, you know, other intuitive features of Internet Explorer 8 here, I've just brought up the uh, website of the CN Tower in Toronto. And let's say that we're interested in going to the tower, um, just as a good example here. So here's their website. I'm just going to go up to contact us, contact us, because that's usually where we're going to find an address. Okay, so 301 Front Street West, Toronto, Ontario. We can see that right there. Now, under normal circumstances, what we would have to do now is take that address, you know, copy it over or retype it into, let's say, Google Maps or anything like that. Um, so uh, let's just say, um, you know, here's the address I want to go to. I'm just going to highlight just for quickness sake, I'm just going to highlight the, um, the postal code. Uh, that can be a zip code or whatever. And then just click on this little arrow here, and that's going to give me all my different options. And if all I've done is just pointed at Map with Live Maps, and it already shows me right out here, you'll see that that shows me uh, the location exactly of the uh, CN Tower just by right-clicking on the postal code. Because it's uh, you know pretty well instantaneous, you don't have to go to another website, you don't have to do anything like that. And of course, if you click on it, it will in fact take you to uh, the map page with the full-size map, and you can get directions and things like that. Um, so that's an option as well. Let's just hop on over to our forum because it's a good example of um, text that's just been implemented into, you know, somebody's just typed it into the forum. So this kind of shows how, you know, you're going to see in just a second here, um, here I am looking at a forum and I'm going to be able to translate it into my language um, so it makes it easier for web surfing and, you know, if you ever come across a site that's in a different language, you're going to be able to read it. So here Vaughn is written in, um, in English and I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go translate with Windows Live and you'll see that we've got the option currently it's set to English and French I can change the language we've got Arabic to English, Chinese and pardon me, Dutch, uh, Chinese simplified and traditional French, German, Italian and Japanese so let's just stick with French for now um, so you'll see that it's placed a copy of my website on both the left and right hand side of this page. Now when I scroll down with this one it scrolls both pages and you're gonna see that on the left hand side I've got my English which is the you know this is what was actually typed into the system and on the right hand side it's translated that fairly reliably not perfectly but it has done a translation into French that's reliable enough that you can read that and that you know if you are primarily a French speaking person um, you'll notice that there's some grammatical issues and some words have not been translated properly and things like that but essentially it's a it's it is a good tool and it's done a good job so then we look over here at our text itself and you can see that it's also translated our uh, actual conversation here uh, so definitely a good implementation of the translation service so I'm happy about that as well and you'll certainly find that handy if you uh, ever come across websites that are not in your uh, home language and you want to be able to translate them and then from there I guess the uh, one last thing that um, that really stood out to me was just the fact that a web address is up here eh, just a simple little thing but Microsoft has thought to basically make the uh, text different colors so that the domain name actually stands out. So that is uh, Internet Explorer 8 in a nutshell as far as uh, the beta development version goes and uh, just give you a quick uh, quick run through of some of the features that we have to look forward to. It does look um, it looks quite good. Um, security wise, uh, GDog, definitely there are a couple of tools here that are handy, pop-up blocker, um, but other than that just the standard Internet Explorer security um, that you would expect from Internet Explorer 7 on. At least we're, we're not at the point now where you can consider uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer versus uh, Firefox as being an, on the same playing field when it comes to safety and security. Um, definitely Firefox is the better way to go that way um, at this point. But, uh, but again, this is a, an early uh, beta. Uh, this is the first beta of Internet Explorer 8, so we could expect that they will be implementing further features um, you know, by, the time that, um, by the time the system is actually released to the public as a full release. So.